Hello, it's good to be with you again. I pray that everyone is doing well. Um, again, if anyone needs anything, please contact the church office. We'll get in touch with you as soon as we can. The elders are talking about um, planning for restarting public worship services. I will let you know as soon as we have any decisions about that. In the meantime, I'm thankful that we get to come and pray and share God's word together this way. Would you join me as we come before God together in prayer? Father, we thank you for this Pentecost time of the church year when we remember and give thanks for the outpouring of your life-giving Holy Spirit upon the church. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, for your power for living. We ask you to guide us as we seek to live as your people. May we be people of your word, empowered by your spirit to live in your love and share your truth with grace and joy. May our lifestyle be infectious that others will want to know what it is that we've got and who it is that we know that they want you for themselves too. Lord, we ask you to break the power of the coronavirus, guide the researchers as they work, protect them, be with all the medical personnel, protect them, we pray, as they serve. We ask you to guide us as we seek to move toward reopening within government and economy and businesses and churches. Show us the right way forward, O oh Lord. We do pray that this virus be made us nothing. Show your mighty power and deliver your people, we pray. We ask you to continue your healing work in Bob and Megan and Skip and Barbara and John. Be with Carolyn and Dorothy, Landon and Evan. Others outside our immediate church family, we pray for Sally and for Lillian that you would uphold them, minister to them, let your healing power flow. We ask you to comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray, pray your peace for our country, O oh Lord, as there is anger and turmoil. We pray for peace, we pray for justice. We ask you to grant wisdom and discernment to those who serve in law enforcement. Um, we want to deal with them with honor and respect. Thank you that they put their lives on the line to serve us. We also ask you to protect them and us from abuse, that you would bring in right people of right character and spirit to serve in those ways. We do thank you for the policemen, for the firemen, for the medical personnel, the first responders, all who minister to us, and we ask you, O oh Lord, to minister to and through them. We thank you for those who serve in the armed forces and ask you to be with them and their families. Be with our schools as they wrap up the school year. Be with our families as they try to figure out summer plans. We pray for the graduates, O oh Lord, whose graduations have been disrupted, to say the least. We ask you to enable them to celebrate in right ways, to guide their steps for the future. Show them your way forward. We ask you to be with families as they make their schedules, as they figure out which programs to try and attend. Show us the way to faithfully and fruitfully live as your people in these challenging days. We thank you, Father, that you are with us always. There is nothing that we can't handle as long as we are with you and you are with us. We thank you that you hear the prayers spoken aloud and that you hear the silent prayers of our hearts. Hear us now as we unite our hearts and voices praying as Jesus taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, in June, we're going to be getting into the book of Mark. Um, I'm getting away from Matthew this morning, talking about uh, Pentecost, about the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, remember God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us, enables us to do the work that God gives us to do. And the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, we see empowering certain people, certain leaders, certain kings and prophets to speak God's word, to 
do the work that God had given them to do. There's an interesting passage in Numbers that concerns Moses that I felt appropriate to share today, so I invite you to turn to Numbers, start at the beginning of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, chapter 11, and we'll be looking at verses 16 through 30. Numbers chapter 11, beginning with verse 16. Hear the word of God. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me seventy of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take of the spirit that is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. Tell the people, Consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, when you will have meat to eat. The Lord heard you when you wailed, If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat it. You will not eat it just one day, or two days, or five, or ten, or twenty days, but for a whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it, because you have rejected the Lord who is among you, and have wailed before him, saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, Here I am among six hundred thousand men on foot, and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? You will now see whether or not what I say will come true for you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together seventy of their elders and had, their stand or had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the seventy elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his Spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Amen. Moses had been talking with the Lord. You can read earlier in chapter 11 and see that Moses was saying, the weight of carrying all these people is too much for me. And that's why the Lord said, bring 70 elders and I will give them of the spirit that is on you and they can help you in leading the people. They'll take some of the burden off of you. The Lord was hearing and responding to Moses' concern. I appreciate that the elders came, that the Lord did put his spirit upon them. And it says, and they prophesied. This isn't uh, declaring future events, but prophecy like this is proclaiming the greatness and goodness of God. It's the human spirit reacting to the touch of the Holy Spirit. They're declaring the Lord, he is mighty and great, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the great and glorious God. Forever may his name be praised. That's the sort of reaction they were having, the prophesying they were speaking, declaring the glories of God. And Eldad and Medad did not make it out to the tent, but the Lord found them where they were in the camp. The Spirit came upon them, and they too prophesied. Joshua, I think, was wanting Moses to be in a unique position of leadership. He wanted to honor Moses, but the Lord said, No, Moses, I, I wish all God's people had the Spirit of God upon them, I wish that they would all prophesy, that they would all declare the glories of God in response to the Spirit of God touching them. And I think one thing that Pentecost does is answer Moses' desire. We know that uh, the Holy Spirit was at work in the Old Testament, working through prophets, priests, kings, special people chosen to do special work. Then Jesus came, and when he was baptized by John, in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, we read, When all the people were being baptized, 
Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Jesus had been conceived by the Holy Spirit, had lived a wonderful sinless life, had a godly personality, and now the Holy Spirit was coming upon him to empower him for work for his public ministry. The disciples knew that Jesus did his work by the power of the Spirit, that the Lord was working through him, that he sought the Father's guidance, and Jesus did the Father's will. The Holy Spirit was working in Jesus, and Jesus had told the disciples that the Spirit would come upon them. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the disciples are asking Jesus, will you be coming to establish your kingdom now? And Jesus responds, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In Acts 1.8, Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit will empower you to live as my people. That's the main work of the Holy Spirit that we see done in the book of Acts, bearing witness to Jesus Christ. A witness tells what he or she has seen and heard. The disciples told about what they had seen and heard of Jesus, and the whole world was touched. They began in Jerusalem, then spread out to Judea, to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. So that verse gives a, an outline for the spread of the church, for what we see in the book of Acts. Jesus ascended to heaven. The disciples were praying in unity, asking the Lord to fulfill his promise to come and empower them to live as his people. And we read in Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, when the day of Pentecost came, now Pentecost was a feast of the Jewish people, a feast where they celebrated the harvest. Pentecost means 50. It was 50 days after first fruits. First fruits, Jesus died on the Passover. First fruits was the first Sunday after the Passover. And 50 days later, Pentecost means 50. 50 days later was the feast of first fruits. We have Jesus who died and now the first fruits of the church being presented unto God. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, filling and empowering the disciples. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The, the sound of wind was definitely a symbol of power. The tongues of fire upon each individual, fire a symbol of God's presence, that he was with each one, all of them beginning to speak in other tongues, and we'll hear more, more about those other tongues in a moment. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazing and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Remember Jesus had said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost parts of the earth. By being given these languages of other peoples of other parts of the world. It was symbolically saying, you will be declaring my glory and my truth to all these other peoples. You will hear, they will hear as you speak the truth. Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. 
Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Peter says this is the beginning of what Joel prophesied. The Holy Spirit being poured out upon all people. They will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak God's truth, to know God's will, to do God's will. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited to you, I'm sorry, accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. They're testifying to Jesus. Peter is testifying sharing the good news that Jesus died and rose from the dead, that God has declared him to be Lord and Christ, the Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. You and I are among those who were far off, who the Lord God has called to believe in Jesus, to follow him, to receive this empowering work of the Holy Spirit. With many more words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Amen. That was Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church, beginning on the day of Pentecost, to empower the people to live as God's people, to enable them to come to believe in Jesus, to help them to live as God's people, to have their lives be transformed. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control are called the fruit of the Spirit, that God grows inside his people as he transforms our hearts and characters and nature to be more like the holy people he calls us to be. He gives us gifts, abilities, empowerments for ministry like Moses and the 70 elders empowered by God to lead. God gives us different gifts to do his will. Moses' desire was that all the people would have the spirit of God upon them and the Spirit of God will come upon us and empower us to serve him and do his work. We can ask him to empower us, to give us 
the ability to do the work he's called us to do. The Holy Spirit helps us come to faith in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is that agent that makes us a new creation when we do believe. The old is gone, the new has come. We're a new creation, spiritually alive to God, restored to a right, living, and forever relationship with him. The Holy Spirit transforms our characters and nature. The Holy Spirit empowers us to, to speak and do what God would have us to say and do to his glory, to fulfill his will, and to serve him. The Holy Spirit is at work through the church, through his people. He enables ordinary people to do extraordinary things. He enables us to keep on keeping on and to do the work he's given us to do. My prayer for us this Pentecost is that we would receive the fullness of what God has for us. It could be there are some who are struggling with the claims of the gospel. Is Jesus really who the Bible says he is? May your Holy Spirit come, O Lord, and touch hearts and open eyes to see the truth and open hearts to receive you. And when they come to that decision, yes, Jesus, you are Savior, be my Savior and Lord. May your spirit come and be that life-giving agent, that agent of transformation, to bring them from death to life, to make them spiritually alive unto you, O Lord. And then may they cooperate with your transforming work going on within them, growing them to be more and more the people that you want them to do as your spirit works within us. Help us to cooperate with the work that you're doing. And Lord, we ask you to give us your empowerment to do the the business of ministry to to do your will in this word in this world give us your words give us your spirit to do your actions enable us to live as your people to your glory we come before you lord with thanksgiving and praise asking you to fill us afresh with your spirit to do your work within each of us exactly what we need that we might be built up and encouraged and able to carry on to come and be that new creation, to be transformed, to become more godly and righteous and holy, to be empowered to be your witnesses in our own Jerusalem and Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. May we live to your glory and serve and praise you now and always. We thank you for the privilege of being your people. May we be filled with your love and go forth to serve you in the power of your spirit. Amen. Go and know that God goes with you. We're called to be his witnesses in this world. Have a living relationship with him that you may share with others what you've seen, what you've heard, what you've experienced, what you've done. Know that God goes with you by his spirit. He lives inside you. And greater, far, far greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's nothing you'll face this day or in the days to come that God cannot see you safely and victoriously through. And may the grace and mercy and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. God bless you.